When our sons were young, they played a game called shotgun whenever we went out in the car. The person who got to the passenger seat first and said shotgun had the pleasure of sitting in the passenger seat next to me. Now, I was somewhat bewildered by this game. Why do you want to sit in the most dangerous car and seat in the vehicle? And more importantly, why would they want to sit next to the most tense driver on the planet? Nevertheless, even though I explained this, each time we went out, shotgun was played. While reading today's verses from Mark, this memory came to mind. Jesus and the twelve apostles were on their way to Jerusalem, and Jesus was trying to prepare them for what lay ahead. This was the third occasion that Jesus had predicted his trial, suffering, death, and resurrection. They were not listening, or at least not comprehending, what he was trying to teach. Jesus' ministry has been one of boundary breaking, challenging the empire, the religious purity system, and the patriarchal family system. Jesus' ministry through actions of inclusiveness to those on the margins and his vision of God's empire was totally different to the world they lived in and there was a consequence for that. The empire and the religious ruling class could not allow the subversive behavior to continue and Jesus was aware of what was going to happen to him in Jerusalem. He was a radical, non-violent, egalitarian who associated with those on the outside of society those who had no power or recognition in the social structure of the day. James and John, sons of Zebedee, the fishermen, who Jesus calls sons of thunder, they are zealous and hot-headed. They ask Jesus and Luke to rain down a heavenly fire on a Samaritan village who has refused Jesus its hospitality. Their request isn't out of left field. They had faith in Jesus, believed in him and his message, and wanted to support him. The request of James and John brings to light our natural desires to be approved of and rewarded in worldly terms. Tom Bissell, in his book, Apostles, suggests that Jesus' reply to their request the cup that I drink, you will drink, appears to be predicting that the Zebedee brothers will die as martyrs. There is an early tradition that John, like his brother James, was martyred. However, what happened to either of them is lo- in reality is lost to history. Following James and John's request, Jesus goes into an explanation about the leadership style of the Gentiles and his style of servant-led leadership. I found an article that talks of nine common leadership styles, including transformational, transactional, autocratic, bureaucratic, charismatic, laissez-faire, and servant-led leadership. I've certainly experienced a number of the above in my working career, and have always found the autocratic and bureaucratic style somewhat demotivating, as opposed to a servant-led leadership environment. Currently, worldwide, we have some very autocratic leaders, such as the President of the United States, Donald Trump, and the leader of Russia, Vladimir Putin, to name just two. Both have sections of their society struggling to survive, while they appear to live lives not dissimilar to the emperors of Rome, who Jesus was challenging and was crucified for. We have a world in climatic crisis 
with one of the most powerful leaders determined that this crisis does not exist. Famine is being experienced in Yemen due to the long-term conflict there. We have a world crying out for a leadership style that offers caring, compassion, and social justice. The Markan scholar Chad Myers says of the Gospel of Mark, this story is by, about, and for those committed to God's work of justice, compassion, and liberation in the world. The Gospel of Mark is expected by most scholars to have been written around 70 CE. This was during a period of considerable violence in Israel. The empire, the Roman Empire, had destroyed the temple and persecution was daily. The followers of Jesus were in disarray. Who would lead them now? May have been a constant question among those survivors. Was this gospel from Mark for them? Mark's Jesus was not suggesting that the leadership should be transferred from the top down. He was not handing out the privileged positions like an emperor or a patriarch would. Mark is saying that leadership belongs to those who learn and follow the way of nonviolent subversion and who are determined not to dominate but to serve and suffer as Jesus. I would like to share with you an example of servant-led leadership that I was part of four very short weeks ago. The Auckland City Mission, after four, nearly 40 years, moved from 140 Hobson Street to 23 Union Street. This was a move that we knew was coming, but most of us were, um, to put it mildly, dreading it. However, it was such a smooth transition. Not a break in any of our services, with the exception of the Calder Health Centre that did close for two, year, two days. However, moving a medical practice is no mean feat. We closed on the Thursday, packed up, unpacked on Friday and were open for, uh, the practice was open on Monday. In the weeks preceding our move, our deacon, Wolf Holt, personified the diaconate. He worked so hard. And I don't think he ever went home, although Diane says he did, but not often. And Wolf wasn't the only one. From the city missioner down to our client committee, Everyone worked together to move the mission. The hours worked by everyone were amazing, and the spirit of positivity, astounding, the spirit of aroha abounded. The planning had been meticulous. We had instructions for packing and labeling boxes, and each team had a timetable to work within, all the while still supporting our clients and their needs. On Friday the 21st of September, we served our last evening meal at Drop-In, and on Saturday the 22nd, we opened for breakfast at our new Hayata at 23 Union Street. Our leaders worked as servants, often slaves, we, and I am not sure that Chris Farrelly or Helen Robinson, our general manager of social services, ever went home in that last week. There is a delightful picture of Helen cleaning the city mission's iconic sign after it was taken off the Prince of Wales before its relocation to Union Street. This is an image epitomizing the style of leadership that Jesus was talking about. In our new location, our practice of service has also changed and has been greeted with respect, and we have been able to offer dignity with our service, which our old building and work practice precluded. 
there have been teething problems. It was a bit like a building site for the first two weeks. But none of these problems have been insurmountable. And the mission is busier than ever. Jesus brought a radical new kind of leadership into the world. Everywhere he went, he sought out the lost, the forgotten, the ignored, the shunned, the broken, and those most in need. Servant leadership is unselfish, not concerned with what we can get out of it, but solely concerned with how someone else can be lifted up. Many servant leaders never make the headlines, but they make a difference in people's lives. Jesus calls to servanthood as leadership is offered to each of us as disciples of Christ.